Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. Always remember, ignorance of the law, excuses, no one. This is Legally Engineer. Good day to all the viewers, to all the students, and to anyone else who might bump into this uh, YouTube account. Again, I'm attorney Bendrick Marali. And I'm attorney April Uy. And we are here to continue discussing the rest of the topics under the nature and effect, effect of, of obligations. Of. So, we are now in Article 1171. So, diretso na tayo. Attorney Uy, ano ba ang sinasabi sa Article 1171? Article 1171, Responsibility arising from fraud is demandable in all obligations. Any waiver of an action for future fraud is void. Yes, so may tinutukoy dito na fraud and I think dun sa last discussion ko, um, na-distinguish natin doon yung uh, two kinds of fraud, no? may incidental and may causal fraud. So, Atty. Anyway, ano bang fraud yung tinutukoy dito sa Article 1171? Yes. So, Article 1171 refers to incidental fraud or fraud which is employed in the fulfillment of an obligation. Mm -hmm. And sinasabi dito na yung nga, responsibility arising from fraud can be demanded with respect to all kinds of obligation. Unlike in the case of responsibility arising from negligence. Yan. So, pinag-distinguish din natin yan, yung negligence at saka yung fraud. So, malinaw lang dito na, yun nga, laging demandable ang uh, uh, fraud. Ang, ang liability because of fraud, uh, unlike sa negligence, na not at all times. But, uh, yun nga, the court is not given the power to mitigate or to reduce the damages to be awarded. Mm -hmm. Kasi nga, pag negligence kasi, yung court has the discretion to mitigate, mitigate, mitigate. the yes. damages. Kasi pag negligence, not necessarily intentional. Mm -hmm. Unlike pag fraud, talagang intentional yan. Mm -hmm. and it's, yes. uh, so, Serious and evil. That its employment to avoid the fulfillment of one's obligation should be discouraged. Can there be a waiver of action or nikuy when it comes to future fraud? Ang nakalagay sa second sentence ng Article 1171, any waiver of an action for future fraud is void. Mm -hmm. So, yung future fraud na sinasabi dito. Yes. So, ibig sabihin, according to the time of commission, yung fraud pala may be past or future. future. At ang tin tinukoy sa Article 1171 is future fraud. Mm -hmm. So, which is now na. any waiver of an action for future fraud is Boy. Kasi mm -hmm. it is against public policy. Mm -hmm. It is against the law. Yes, and uh, any contrary rule would actually encourage the perpetration of fraud because the obliger knows that even if he should commit fraud, he would not be liable for it anyway. So, mas magkakaroon sila ng lakas na loob no, na mag-perpetrate ng fraud. Which is, again, sabi nga natin niyo, it's contrary to law and to public, public policy. policy. How about waiver of action for past uh, fraud naman, yeah. Atty. So, any waiver of an action for past fraud is valid. Mm -hmm. Kasi nga, ang sabi dyan, what the law prohibits is the waiver anterior or prior mm -hmm. to the fraud and to the knowledge thereof by the agreed party. And we have to take note that a past fraud can be the subject of a valid waiver because the waiver can be considered as an act of generosity, generosity. and magnanimity on the part of the party who is the victim of the, the fraud. fraud. So kasi kung nalaman mo na uh, it has been committed in the past and that uh, it has come to your attention now and uh, yun nga, um, wini-wave mo yun, therefore it's an act of generosity it's on your uh, part. Yun yung past fraud. So, any waiver of an action resulting from a past fraud is valid kasi what is renounced is the effects of the fraud. That is the right to indemnity of the party entitled to. Mm -hmm. So, siguro mas maganda bigyan natin sila ng example, no? Para okay. mas maintindihan natin. So, for example, at our name, wait, si Angel, uh, she promised to deliver 120 cabans of dinorado rice to Sarah at the rate of 10 cabans a month. Oh, so uh, 10 cabans ng bigas uh, kada buwan. Yes. And both of them cannot make an agreement whereby Sarah will not file an action in court against Angel should Angel commit fraud in the performance of her obligation. Because? Because this waiver of an action for future fraud is void. So, Hence. hindi pa nakukumit mm -hmm. yung fraud mm -hmm. na i-wave mo na agad mm -hmm. yung, uh, yung liability, liability. Oh. Oh, oh. Of, 
uh, the person who would commit such a uh, kind of fraud. So, what if nagkaroon tayo ng agreement? I mean, sa kanila, in that case, si Sara at saka si uh, Angel, Angel. nagkaroon sila ng agreement na, sige, any future fraud is deemed with given this agreement. Hindi pa rin. Mm -hmm. Kasi, okay. ang sabi dyan ay, Sara can still file an action against Angel for damages arising from the fraud. Kasi so, nga, bawal um, ang future fraud. Waiver of uh, Yes, and because that is against the law and public policy. Because it will only perpetrate the commission of fraud. Alright, so in this case, uh, once fraud is committed, and yes. Sarah, for example, with full knowledge thereof that a fraud has been committed, she can waive her right to indemnity as an act of forgiveness. Or yes. Or sabi kanina ng generosity or magnanimity. magnanimity. So, on a difference part. ito kanina dun sa previous example natin. Mm -hmm. Ito, na-commit na yung fraud. Mm -hmm. And si Sarah, meron na siyang knowledge of the commission of the After fraud. After it has been committed. May, alam na niya na niloko siya. Yes. And then, pinatawad niya. Pwede yun kasi that is past fraud. Pero yung hindi ka pa... Uh, hindi pa nakukumit yung fraud. Nalokohin ka pala. Nalokohin ka pala. At sinabi mo, sige, okay Lokohin lang. Mo. Okay <laughs> lang. That is against the law or public policy. policy. Pero halimbawa, nalaman mong niloko ka, pero nag-stay ka pa rin. Yes. Sabi ba na yun? <laughs> Martyr ka na lang. Martyr ka na. Okay lang daw yun. Uh, sabi ng bata. Uh, so, bahala ka. Ikaw, sa'yo naman yun. Yeah. So, uh, tatandaan nyo yan guys, sa indifference ng past and future fraud. Now, um, let's go directly to Article 1172. Pala, ni, pala limi natin yung discussion natin. So, yes. ano ba yung 1172? So, responsibility arising from negligence mm -hmm. in the performance of every kind of obligation is also demandable, but such liability may be regulated by the courts according to the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So, ayan, Article 1171, it talks about responsibility arising from fraud. 1172 naman, uh, responsibility arising from negligence, it is demandable. Same mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sabi natin kanina, demandable din yung yes, responsibility yes. arising from fraud. Pero ang kaibahan, mm -hmm. ulitin na naman natin, mm -hmm. kapag negligence, the court may uh, mitigate or reduce the amount yes. of damages to be awarded. Unlike kapag fraud na hindi talaga pwede yes, mitigate. Yes, because uh, negligence is not as serious as, as fraud. fraud. Because yes. in negligence, there is no bad faith. Yes. Or deliberate intention to, to cause, cause injury damage. or damage. Yes. Yes. And when both parties to a transaction are mutually negligent, yeah, for example, in the performance of their obligations, then the fault of one cancels the negligence yes, of, of the, the other. other. So, yun yung uh, when it comes to negligence. However, can there, uh, can there be a waiver of action arising from negligence, according uh, to Is that um, valid? Uh, an action for future negligence may be renounced mm -hmm. except where the nature of the obligation requires the exercise of extraordinary mm -hmm. ordinary diligence as in the case of common carriers. So, pwede. Mm -hmm. Except when the nature of the obligation requires the exercise extraordinary. of extraordinary Kasi di ba napag-usapan natin dati na may different uh, standard of care or yes. degree of diligence. So, limbawa, then is yung uh, diligence of a good father of a family or slight uh, diligence. Pero ang sinasabi dito, uh, kapag expressly provided na extraordinary diligence yung dapat na e-exercise doon ng ating uh, party, Therefore, hindi pwede daw i-wave doon yung uh, negligence. Yung negligence. Future negligence. From, yes, oh. future negligence. Kanina, future fraud, walang exception. Bawal talaga. Mm -hmm. Itong future negligence, pwede mong i-wave except when the nature of the obligation requires the exercise of extraordinary diligence. Mm -hmm. And also, there are, neg mm -hmm. there are uh, uh, negligence kasi na tantamon to uh, bad faith. Bad na. faith. Yung mga gross negligence. gross negligence. And in that case, when it's already so gross na wala talagang mm -hmm. exercise na any kind of uh, degree of care, like halimbawa kahit malang slight uh, degree of uh, diligence, uh, makukonsider natin yan as gross negligence which is equivalent to no fraud. fraud. And uh, bad faith does not imply, does not simply connote negligence or bad judgment causing damages to another. So, so any waiver of an action for future negligence of this kind is therefore mm -hmm. void. So, hindi lahat ng future negligence ay pwede nating i-waive. So, dalawa. Mm -hmm. Dalawang instances uh -oh. lang na pwede. Ano nga yung una? Yung una, when uh, hindi pwede, dito ha, hindi pwede i-waive yung future negligence. Kasi generally pwede. Mm -hmm. So, dito sa dalawang instances na ito, hindi pwede. Una, when the nature of the obligation requires extraordinary diligence. At yung padalwa is when the negligence is so gross or when it shows bad faith that is equivalent to fraud. Mm -hmm. So, 
At tandaan nyo yun ha, yung general rule at saka yung two exceptions to the general rule as yes. regards liability arising from future negligence. So pag-usapan naman natin ng pernibay, palalinin natin yung discussion natin about negligence because there are different kinds of negligence yes. according to sources Source of negligence. Pag hindi ka nga ng isa ng pernibay. So we have contractual negligence or culpa contractual. Mm-hmm. Ano ba itong uh, culpa contractual na to? Ito culpa contractual or contractual negligence from the word itself it is negligence in contracts resulting in their breach under Article 1172. Is this a source of obligation according to No, this is not a source of obligation. It merely makes the debtor liable for damages in view of his negligence in the fulfillment of his pre-existing obligation. Mm-hmm. So, tatandaan natin yung uh, 1157, di ba? Yun lang naman, exclusive mm-hmm. yung sources of obligation doon eh. Pero yun nga, sinasabi dito yung uh, contractual so, negligence, so, hindi ito isa sa mga sources of obligation. obligation. Ang source of obligation doon is actually the contract itself. Yes. no? Yes. Kasi nga, nagkaroon ng contract, full pa contractual. So, ang source of obligation is the contract, the contract mm-hmm. itself. Tatandaan niyo yun, okay? Uh-huh. Now, there is also what we call civil negligence or yung culpa akiriyana yeah. naman. It's the negligence. It's the negligence which by itself is the source mm-hmm. of an obligation between the parties not formally bound by any pre-existing contract. This is also called quasi-delic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ito yung uh, Ito naman yung source. No, uh, so source of obligation number 1157. Uh, uh, number 4. Mm-hmm. So also, aside from civil, civil negligence, negligence, meron din tayong criminal negligence yes. or culpa criminal. Ito naman yung negligence resulting in the commission of a crime when yes. a crime is committed. In negligence cases, the aggrieved party may choose between a criminal action under Article 100, 100 of the Revised Penal Code mm-hmm. or or a civil action for damages under Article 2176 of the Civil Code. Yun yung mm-hmm. quasi delict Mm. Yung 2176. Yes, so nasabi niya ko rin yung may option ka no, under Revised Penal Code, Article 100 or 2176 of the Civil Code. But what is prohibited here guys is under Article 2177 is, is that of uh, to recover damages twice, twice mm-hmm. for, for the, the same negligent act. act. So mamili ka lang no, uh-huh. kung dadaanin mo siya through Article 100 of the Revised Penal Code or 2176 of the Civil Code. Bawal yes. lang. Pagsabayin. Ang example kasi niyan, yung mga reckless imprudence resulting in homicide. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, you may opt to choose, uh, if file mo siya under article, dun sa RPC. Yes. Mm-hmm. Dun sa RPC. Pwede din naman na civil case lamang. Mm-hmm. Oh, under article 2176, yung quasi-delic. Yes. Oh, pero in no case na pwede kang mag-recover ng damages twice. Correct. Right, from the same negligent act. Oh, oh, it's uh, prohibited by the mm-hmm. So, let's give uh, more examples in this. Ma. Halimbawa, yes. attorney, uy, si S, no? Your seller. Si seller. Yes. Uh, the seller entered into a contract of sale with B, the buyer, to deliver a specific horse on a certain day. So, take note, yes. it's a specific horse. There is a certain day of delivery and the horse died through the negligence of S before delivery. So, namatay ang specific course bago ma deliver yes. Now, in this case, CS or seller is liable for damages to the buyer for having failed to fulfill a pre-existing obligation because of his negligence. And this is what we call culpa contractual. Again, ang source of obligation dito is the pre-existing contract na meron sila. No? Not the negligence. Not the negligence itself. Because it's yes. not one of the sources of obligations under Article 11.7 of the New Code. Yes. Can you give another example doon? So, uh, related to that, okay, anyway. So, in relation to the first example given mm-hmm. better ni Marani, for example, the horse belongs to and is in the possession of B. Mm-hmm. So, yung horse kanina nasa possession na ng buyer. Here. The negligence of the seller which results in the death of the horse is culpa akiliyana. In this case kasi, there is no pre-existing contractual relation between the seller and the buyer. The negligence itself is the source of liability. Kasi nga, ang quasi deli yan ay isa sa ating source of obligation under Article 1157, paragraph ay number 4. So, uh, so nabigyan natin ng na example yung culpa akiliyana. Yes. How about uh, criminal uh, negligence, negligence naman? Yes. So, for example, a crime can be committed by negligence. As sabi nga natin kanina, if, for example, si buyer here wants, he can bring an action for 
kulpa criminal or damage to property through simple or reckless imprudence. And here, the crime is the source, source of, of the of obligation of S to pay damages. However, but, na again, yes, the, the buyer cannot recover damages twice for the same act or omission of S. Yes. In other words, responsibility yeah. for a quasi delict is not demandable together with the civil liability arising from a criminal yeah. offense according to Article 2177 of, of the New Civil Code. Code. Alright, so attorney, uy, ang curious question na meron tayo ngayon mm -hmm. is, ano ba yung effect of negligence on the part of the injured party? Yan, yeah. effect. Mm -hmm. So, it depends. Yeah. Kung yung negligence ba ni plaintiff mm -hmm. ay immediate and proximate cause of his injury, then he cannot recover damages. Alright, so mm -hmm. para sa mga viewers natin na hindi mm -hmm. na hindi pa alam kung ano yung sabihin ng plaintiff, ang plaintiff po, yan yung naghahabla o lumalapis sa korte para i-air out yung grievances na meron siya. So, yes. siya yung injured party na naghahabla yes. dito. At sabi niya, Tony anyway, Uy, kung mapatunayan naman na ang immediate or proximate cause okay. ng injury na nasustain niya, yung kanyang kapabayanan or negligence, yeah. in that case, he cannot recover damages. Mm -hmm. Nasa first sentence yun ng article 2179, 2179 of the civil code. So that's the first case. Yung second case naman, yung what if? Yung second case mm -hmm. naman, what if immediate and proximate cause of the injury was brought about by the defendant, pero mm -hmm. si plaintiff ay merong contributory negligence. negligence. So ano mangyayari so, doon? The effect is that the plaintiff may recover damages yes. but the court shall mitigate the damages to be mm -hmm. awarded. So just to reiterate, no, mm -hmm. uh, may nabamit kasi si attorney Uy na defendant. So mm -hmm. kanina yung plaintiff siya yung naghahabol, uh -huh. ang defendant siya naman yung inihahabla, nireklamo. So uh -huh. ang sinabi din ni attorney Uy is kung napatunayan sa korte na yung defendant nga, yung kanyang uh, uh, kapabayanan or negligence sa immediate or proximate cause, then yes. siya ay liable. Yes. Pero kung mapatunayan din naman na meron din namang parte sa part ni plaintiff na nakadagdag, na nakadagdag uh, may negligence din siya, oh, pwede daw imi-delete or ibawasan ng korte yung i-award na damages kay plaintiff. Ang tawag doon ay contributory negligence. negligence. Pero kung wala namang contributory negligence at all, then the court hindi kailangan imi-delete. Laya mo talaga doon si defendant. So, take note of that. And, you know, uh, guys, in other words, to be entitled to damages, the law actually does not require that the negligence of the defendant should be the sole cause of the damage. Kasi even if meron namang talagang contributory negligence, um, pwede pa rin mag entitled uh, to, damages, to damages. Pero mitigated na mitigated. or reduced na yung amount. I think yun yung sinasabi kanina dun sa previous article natin that the court can actually mitigate the damages when it comes to negligence. But yes. again, pag fraud, bawal na uh, mitigation in that case. No? So that's uh, primarily what us, uh, Article 1172 11, provides. So now we're into Article 1173. Yes. And Article 1173 provides that the fault or negligence of the obliger consists in the omission of that diligence which is required by the nature of the obligation and corresponds with the circumstances of the persons, of the time, and of the place. When negligence shows bad faith, the provisions of Articles 1171 as discussed kanina and 2201 paragraph 2 shall apply. So second paragraph, if the law or contract does not state the diligence which is to be observed in the performance, that which is expected of a good father of a family shall be required. Mm, that's the standard of mm, care na meron yeah. tayo. So, therefore, maybe we discuss it talks about it negligence na naman. Ano ba yung factors to be considered? considered. So, so, because negligence is actually a question of fact. fact. No? Its existence being dependent upon the particular circumstances of each case. So, may mga na enumerate dyan na parin yun. Ano, ano ba yung mga yun? So, nakalagay doon, uh, factors to be considered in determining negligence. Una, the nature of the obligation. Pangalawa, the circumstances of the person. Mm -hmm. Circumstances of the time and place. Yes, and yes. I think, uh, um, Self-explanatory yeah. naman to. You can uh, look at the uh, module for examples, examples. in there. And uh, so that you uh, appreciate more kung ano-ano yung... Uh, uh, examples you know. doon. So, nakalagay din dyan, negligence is never presumed but must yes. be proven by the party who alleges it. He who yes. alleges must prove. prove. Okay. So, um, total, napapag-usapan yes. na rin naman natin yung diligence. Pag negligence kasi, inevitably, we have to talk about diligence, diligence. required. And uh -oh. again, under Article 1173, the following kinds of diligence are required. First, 
that can be the part of the party so or inherited party. So, parang may hierarchy yan. Yes. Ano yung pag-usapan? Eh, di yun. Either the law. in oral or in writing. So, kung ano yun na pag-usapan. So, but if there is no stipulation to that effect, at or anyway, what's gonna happen? Yes. That required by law in the particular case must be observed. O, yung batas, papasok na naman yung batas. Walang agreement yung parties as to the uh, diligence to, required to be exercised. Eh, di dun tayo kung ano ba yung provided by law. Oh, halimbawa so, ako, at anyway, uh -oh. halimbawa ako, uh, jeepney driver ako, mm -hmm. ano din? sumakay ka mm -hmm. sa jeepney na meron ako, so uh -oh. mamasada ako, hindi naman tayo nag-usap na, oy, ang diligence required ko sa iyo ay ano ha, uh, slight, slight love, diligence, or, uh, 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 um, uh, diligence, diligence of a good father, father or family. So ano mangyayari doon? Kasi wala naman tayong stipulation. Oh, oh, wala naman tayong stipulation. And then you follow what the law provides. At ang sabi ng batas, kapag common carrier ka, you have to exercise extraordinary diligence in the safety of passengers. So understood yun, kahit walang usapan mm -hmm. between the passenger and the driver. Because that is what the law provides. Mm -hmm. How about uh, yung pangatlo? Eh, kung walang number one, walang agreement, wala ding number two, there is no law or the law is silent, then the diligence expected of a good father of a family or ordinary diligence shall be observed. So, in relation yan sa Article 1163, mm -hmm. yung unang part, oo, yung na Article 9. Love sense of any stipulation, condition of Yung law. standard of care. Yes, Ay, diligence of good father oh. of or due diligence, or ordinary care, or ordinary diligence. Yes. Alright, take note of that, guys. So, uh, so now we are into Article 1174. 11 this one is yes. even important for provision. So, except in cases expressly specified by the law, or when it is otherwise declared by stipulation, or when the nature of the obligation requires the assumption of risk, no person, no person shall be responsible for those events which could not be foreseen, or which though foreseen, were inevitable. Mm -hmm. So, so may nabagay dyan ng fortuitous event. Oh, eh, uh, actually, oh. nung una kong na-encounter ito, hindi ko nga ma-pronounce kung ano yung fortuitous oh, oh, event. So, it, we have to uh, be familiar with this. Ano ba ang yes. meaning ng fortuitous event? A fortuitous yes. event is any extraordinary event yes. which cannot be foreseen or which, though foreseen, is inevitable. In other words, it is an event which is either impossible to foresee or, or impossible, impossible to avoid. avoid. Yan. So, ano ba yung essence ng uh, fortuitous event? Yes. So, the essence of a fortuitous event consists of being a happening independent of the will of the obliger and mm -hmm. which happening makes the normal fulfillment of the obligation impossible. Mm -hmm. So, dito na papasok yung uh, kung baga na ganyan yung hurdle to or mahirap mag-comply sa obligation because of fortuitous event. But, there is, uh, there are requisites in order yes. to apply the fortuitous event. Oo. Ano pa kasing kahalagaan kung bakit mm -hmm. kailangan natin alamin yung requisites ng fortuitous event? Kasi po, kapag may fortuitous event, the obligor is not liable. And generally. Uh, generally. Yeah, general generally. Oh, oh. Kasi later on, we'll find out. Uh, and the obligation will be extinguished. Yes. Yan po kasi. It will exempt the obligor from the fulfillment of his obligation when there is a fortuitous event. Ngayon, let's talk about the requisites of a fortuitous yes. event. Kailan ba natin masasabi na ang isang uh, pangyayari ay fortuitous event? Mm -hmm. That would exempt the uh, obliger from liability. Yes. So, the first there in the requisites mm -hmm. is first the event must be independent of the will or at least of the obliger's will. Yeah. So independent, walang of kinalaman human will. Oh, oh, of human oh. will. No? Uh, yeah, hands, kumbaga, hands off. Wala, oh. wala akong, walang kinalaman dyan. Even the obliger. Or um, any human being. Wala mm -hmm. namang, hindi naman hindi nusto. Mm -hmm. Walang kami kinalaman. Mm -hmm. no? Second, the event could not be foreseen or if it could be foreseen, it must have been impossible to avoid. Mm -hmm. oh, yun na yung definition niya. Mm -hmm. Hindi mo siya mafo-foresee or kung ma-force mo man, hindi mo naman ito. Ano po ito, Bol? Ano po ito, Bol? That's the second requisite of uh, for fetus event. And the yes. third one is that the event must be of such a character as to render it impossible for the obliger to comply with his obligation in a normal manner. Yes. Kasi kahit nag-exist yung first two, pero kaya pa rin naman mag-comply yes. in a normal, in a normal manner. manner. Diba? Hindi uh, ka pa rin ma-exonerate from liability or may-exempt. And you always naman. take note of normal manner, yung mm. phrase normal manner. Kasi kung hindi normal manner na yung fulfillment ng obligation, ibig sabihin, 
for to ito's event na yun. Yes, yes. Uh, later on, magbibigyan naman na yung example as regards uh, that. Okay? So, yung pang-apat, attorney Oy, ano ba yun? Yes, the obliger must be free from any participation in or the aggravation of the injury to the obligee. So, parang na din yung number one, mm-hmm. na the obligor must free from any participation mm-hmm. or aggravation of Kasi the injury. Kasi kung na-aggravate yung injury dahil nga kayo obliger, yes. eh, hindi pa rin siya may exempt from liability. Yes. Take note, guys, that the absence of any of the above requisites would prevent the obliger from being exempt from liability. Therefore, Meaning, the four requisites must, be, must concur must in concur. order for, for Twitter's event, in order to exempt the mm-hmm. obligor from liability. Yes, very it's particular so dito ang batas kasi uh-huh. this is not the general rule. This is the exception. Uh-huh. Oh, exception. Oh. Oh. Kasi ang general rule, liable ka. Dahil may obligation. Kung hindi ka nakagampan sa obligation mo. And yes. you would only be exempt from uh, your general rule of liability mm-hmm. if nag-exist ang 42's okay. event. And para mag-exist ang 42's event, again, yung 4 exists. Take note of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, what are the rules as to liability in case of 42's event? I think ito no, yung mga discussion. Oh, general rule a person is not responsible for loss or damage resulting from fortuitous events. In other words, the obligation is extinguished. Mm, that's a general rule, no? Mm, general but there are exceptions there. Okay, so we want to discuss ano ano ba yung mga exceptions yes. to the general rule na kapag may fortuitous event ay hindi liable lang ating uh, obligor. Yes. So, first is when it is expressly specified by law. Yes. At, so, ibig sabihin, uh, yes. when expressly specified by law hmm. na kahit may fortuitous hmm. event, hindi pa rin exempt ang yes. obligor from liability. Hmm. So, ano yung mga specified by law yes. na yun? So, the first uh, spe- as specified by law is when the debtor is guilty of fraud, negligence, or delay, or contravention of the terror of the obligation according yes. to Article 1170 11, of the New Civil Code. So, mm-hmm. ibig sabihin niya lang, kahit may fortuitous event, kung nag-exist naman talaga na fraud, guilty ng fraud, ng delay, negligence, or contravention of the tenor, kahit may fortuitous event, event liable pa na siya. And, yes. for example, in the case of uh, an obligation to deliver a specific, specific thing, thing. Oh. kapag nagkaroon ng fortuitous mm-hmm. event, ano mangyayari sa obligation? Generally, the obligation will be extinguished. At isa pa kasi, specific thing kasi yan. Mm-hmm. Sabi natin, pag specific, it is designated with particularity. Mm-hmm. Ibig sabihin, you cannot replace it with another mm-hmm. class or another quality. Kasi so, it's very specific. Once mag-perish na, mm-hmm. extinguish. So, so once na ang specific thing ay madamage mm-hmm. or ito ay mawala because of our tweet event, mm-hmm. so ibig sabihin, the obligation is extinguished. Pero, Pero dahil may, for example, nag-commit ka ng fraud, negligence, delay, contravention of the tenor of the obligation under Article 1170, mm-hmm. kahit may fortuitous event po, ay liable ka pa rin to pay for damages. Kung baga, na extinguish yung obligation to but, deliver specific thing, pero it is converted to a monetary mm-hmm. obligation to pay damages. Mm-hmm. So take note of that, okay? Yeah. So second, as expressly yes. provided or specified by law is when the debtor has promised to deliver the same, same specific, specific thing, thing to two or more persons who do, do not, not have, have the same interest. interest. And for, for it would be impossible for the debtor to actually comply with his obligation to two or more creditors even without any fortuitous event taking place. Kasi nga, kung halimbawa, if we namin to, de- to deliver a specific thing to two persons, kapag kahit naman walang fortuitous event, eh, impossible sa yes. akin na ma-deliver ko yung iisang uh, specific, specific thing, thing to two, two persons. So do not have, do the, not same. have the same interest. No? So, um, oh, oh, and this was discussed na under oh, Article 1165, yes. Paragraph mm-hmm. 3. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, immaterial dyan ang existence oh, oh. ng Fort Wigo. This event. So, ang pangatlo, okay. yes. when the obligation to deliver of a specific thing arises from a criminal mm-hmm. offense, unless the thing having been offered by the debtor to the person who should receive it, the latter refused without justification to accept it. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, kapag naman may obligation to deliver a specific thing, at itong obligation na ito arises from a criminal offense, ibig sabihin, kahit may fort with this event, at nawala yung bagay or nadamage yung bagay, liable pa rin. Mm-hmm. Oh. Same with number one, letter A. Yes, oh. okay. Ang uh, exception uh, nga lang is kung in-offer naman na yan. Oh, for example, uh, uh, yung carnapper, mm-hmm. ninakaw yung kotse, mm-hmm. 
yung kotse because of for Twitter's event ay na damage talaga totally wreck. Uh, wreck. Oh. So dahil specific yung thing na yon, ibig sabihin the ob the, the extinguished. Oh, oh, the mm. obligation is extinguished kasi nga specific. Okay. So mako-convert to liability mm. to pay damages. Mm. Okay. So, take note natin yun, no, yung principle ng pag-specific theme na wala, may extinguish yung obligation, but exception to that is kapag yan naman yung obligation na yun, arising from a criminal offense. Criminal offense, offense at my uh, delay, no. oh. negligence, fraud, contravention, so makoconvert into a monetary obligation to pay for damages. And merong exception dito, yung unless the thing having been offered by the debtor to the person who should receive it. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng my mora accipiendi which we yes. so, oh, ibig sabihin nito may delay on the part of the creditor o doon sa may-ari ng sasakyan ina-offer na or ibinabalik na nung carnapper yung sasakyan mm -hmm. kay doon sa may-ari pero yung uh, yung may-ari refuse to accept mm -hmm. uh, without legal justification and, and justifiable oh, oh. Mm -hmm. so may mora accipiendi mm -hmm. So, tapos, nung nag-refuse siya, nawala na yung car because of, her, of a fortuitous event. O kaya nasira na, hindi na pwedeng magamit. So, Except that general way. rule will apply. Hindi oh, okay. liable. Hindi break, pero oh, siya. Go back to the general rule. Yes. So, ang pangapat naman dyan, as expressed and specified by law, is when the thing to be delivered is generic. Yes. So, this time, pag generic naman, for the debtor can still comply with this obligation by delivering another thing of the same kind yeah. in accordance with the principle that genius, genius never, never perishes. perishes. Genius so, not Logic perish. lang yan. Right. Oh, dahil kanina, pansin nyo doon sa ABC, lahat yun specific thing. Mm -hmm. May extinguish pero may monetary obligation to pay for damages. Eh di yung letter D, kapag generic yung thing. Mm -hmm. Pwede mo nga namang palta ng another thing which is of the same quality or the same kind. Yes. Oh. So, kung yung una natin is when it's expressly specified by law, yung pangalawa na, 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 pangalawa naman natin yes. is when, when it is declared by the stipulation of the parties. Yes. So, ang, ang sistema dito, kahit may fortuitous event, nasabi natin general rule, may fortuitous event na wala or nasira yung bagay, Except, absolved from liability, no liability, the obligation is extinguished, mm -hmm. the obligor is not liable. Mm -hmm. Pero, dito naman sa padalwa, meron silang usapan or meron silang agreement yung both party agreed that kahit may fortuitous event liable ka pa rin but uh, the same should be clearly expressed yes, so cannot be implied mm -hmm. so hindi mo pwedeng imply, kailangan clearly and expressly stated or provided mm -hmm. yung uh, liability in case of fortuitous event yes, alright so uh, pangatlo, yes, uh, meron pa as, as an exception to the general rule is when the nature of the obligation requires the assumption, assumption of, of risk. risk no? mm. Here, risk of loss or damage is an essential element in, in an obligation. obligation. So, to better shed light on this, uh, let's give an example that are we going. Yes. So, son insured his house against fire for 500000 with life. Mm -hmm. An insurance sure company. company. Later, the house was destroyed by accidental fire. Accident. Uh, let's assume na yung accidental fire, ito yung talagang ini-insure ng insurance business. Yes, yes. Ito yung peril insured against. Mm -hmm. Although, the cause of the loss is a fortuitous event. Alin doon yung fortuitous event? Yung accidental mm -hmm. fire. Si Sun, yung insured, may recover the amount of the policy. Mm -hmm. uh, because in a contract of insurance, the insurer, si Life, in consideration of the premium paid by the insured, si Sun undertakes to indemnify the latter for the loss of the thing insured by reason of the peril insured against, even if the cause of the loss is a fortuitous event. Okay, kita niyo dito, ang cause ng loss is a fortuitous event. Nasunog daw yung bahay ni Sun. Ni Sun. Ang bahay is insured for 500,000 insured against fire. Si Life naman yung insurance company. Tapos yung bahay ni Sun na insured ay nasunog through accidental fire. And that accidental fire is a fortuitous yes. event. Therefore, dapat generally, ang isipin natin dahil may fortuitous event, hindi liable dapat si Life. Yes. Dahil 
na may fortuitous events sa hindi daw liable. Pero, that is the nature of the, the obligation. obligation. Which life. requires the assumption, assumption of, of risk. Because it's the very essence of uh, insurance, di ba? So, kaya nga nagpapa-insure kasi in the event na magkaroon nga ng fortuitous... Halimbawa uh, uh, din, yung life insurance na lang. Mm, yeah. oh, ako nagpa-insured. Oh, life. Tapos mamaya, huwag naman po sana <laughs> namatay. Mm -hmm. oh, eh, di ba yung pagkamatay, that is a fortuitous event. Mm -hmm. You cannot foresee, or even though na foresee mo na na mamatay ka, pero unavoidable. <laughs> oh, eh di, sasabihin mo ba na, sasabihin ba sa'yo ni nung, nung insurance company, o oh, namatay siya through fortuitous events, so therefore we are not liable. Mali, because the nature of the obligation of the insurance company requires the assumption of risk. Yun talaga nature ng business nila. Alright, take note of that. Okay? And uh, so, pretty much that sums up yung ating Article 1174 and we jump into an article which then, is uh, Article 1175. So, usurious transactions shall be governed by special law. Mm -hmm. So, bago natin uh, define yung meaning ng term na usurious transaction mm -hmm. or usury, ano muna yung relevant dito na yung simple loan or mutuo? Mm -hmm. Kasi itong uh, article na to, mm -hmm. it covers yung uh, contract of loan or yung mutuum na tinatawag natin. Yes. Itong simple loan or mutuum, it's a contract whereby one of the parties delivers to another money or other consumable thing upon the condition that the same amount of the same kind and quality shall be paid. It may be gratuitous or with a stipulation to pay interest according to Article 1933 of the Civil Code. So, ito yung ano, utang, utang, utang. Simple as loan or utang. No? So, it co uh, 1175 covers that. So, ano ba yung meaning of usury? Uh, oh, usury is contracting for or receiving interest in excess of the amount allowed by law for the loan or use of money, goods, chattels, or credits. Mm -hmm. so, big sabihin, excessive yung pag-receive mo ng interest or yung pag-collect mo ng interest. Mm -hmm. In the po, amount po, allowed sabay, by sobra law. Naman yung aking 100% interest. interest. So, uh, yeah. So, that is may, 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 ano, may, ano, may, meron yung, uh, it presupposes, uh, an amount of interest which is only allowed by, by law. law. No, kapag excessive na doon, then uh, serious ng uh, transaction yung meron doon. Meron bang, attorney Marayot, meron bang allowed ang batas kung magkano lang dapat ang interest na i-charge mo? Depende. Mm -hmm. yes, depends. Depends. Depende. Depende uh, if uh, we're talking here of uh, the date prior to, uh, no, to the issuance of uh, a central bank circular number 905. Kasi prior to that, meron talagang uh, legal oh, oh. interest which is 12% uh, yeah. na ini-impose. And anything mm -hmm. in excess of that can be considered as if you're used and therefore it's contrary to law. Right. So by virtue of central mm -hmm. bank circular number 905 as issued by the monetary board under the authority granted uh, to it by the usury law, the rate of interest and other charges on a loan or forbearance of money, goods, or credit, regardless of maturity and whether secured and unsecured, that may be charged or collected shall not be subject to any ceiling prescribed under the usury law. Because now, usury it is... is now legally non-existent. <coughs> so, ibig sabihin, wala nang... Uh, amount of interest prescribed by law. So, it depends upon the parties kung magkano yung interest na napag-usapan. Wala sila kasi uh, ano yung may feeling Provided na naman na hindi naman sobrang laki. So, the courts will decide kung alin ba yung unconscionable. Pag nagkaroon ng dispute uh, with, when it comes to it. But Party take note will... guys na yung sinabi niya na legally non-existent, eh, hindi ibig sabihin na na-abolish na yung ano na to, yung uh, batas na to. Kasi pwede itong ano, uh, i-revive yung batas na yan. So anytime. But ngayon, again, legally non-existent kasi hindi applicable yung batas na yan. At dyan, so may mga utang, mm -hmm. reminder namin. Uh -huh. So, hindi kayo pwedeng kolektahan mm -hmm. ng interest. Yes. Or pwede lang makakolekta sa inyo ng interest kapag the payment of interest 
is expressly stipulated. Mm-hmm. So, may naman talaga expressly stipulated. Kailangan in writing yung interest at saka yung amount at yung right to collect mm-hmm. the interest. At pangatlo, the interest must be lawful. Mm-hmm. Meaning, it is not unconscionable, it is not inequitous, mm-hmm. oo, hindi naman excessive. Yes, okay. and actually, uh, yung stipulation for the payment of usurious interest is void. Mm-hmm. That is as if there is no stipulation as to interest. Kasi nga, kapag uh, usurious yung interest mo, it's uh, contrary to law. law. And anything that is contrary to law, alam natin, when it comes to the contract, that is, is that void. Is void no? yes. And on that note, guys, um, I'll see you again. And always remember, ignorance of the law excuses no one. So let's enjoy, learn, and have fun. See you again. Bye.